welcome to the demonstration for the module 5 activity. So this is in replacement for the synchronous learning session as the synchronous learning session wasn't necessarily successful or rather the recording of it. So with that one, I'll be demonstrating it to you using this format instead. So I have here A13. So A13 is the keyframe that I've used for the module 5. Um, the example that I've used for module 5. So I'll be utilizing that one. Um, some materials that I also have in here is my A4 keyframe. So I have it right here. I also have my A10 keyframe, which is cleaned up. So this is what I'm supposed to be expecting later on when you do your module 5 activity. And then we have, of course, our two uh, model sheets, which is for the facial expressions and then the full body third around. So I'll be placing them at a very um accessible place so that i can reference them um accessible place so that i can reference them as i am drawing i'll be also using the a10 and then the a4 as references as you will be seeing later of course my um excess paper right here and of course i have my um, pencils and eraser at the side so the first thing that we're going to do right here is we're going to analyze what we have right now. So our A13, um, the sample frame that I have right here is kind of rough. It's kind of around the edges. So you can kind of see right here we have the keyframe number. We don't have a timing chart as you can see right here. However, we have the same. We have special instructions. These are the special instructions that you will also be seeing in your A10. So I'd like you to please use this one as reference later on when we're doing our um, A10 activity or our module 5 activity. So it has basically the same things, albeit with some um, differences. And as you can see, it's a very much rough around the edges. If you were to do clean up on this one, you would be very much confused because there are a lot of things that are, that are incorrect with this, which we'll be de delving more into later. So when you get your, um, when you get your, so when you get your, um, when you get your keyframe, it's more or less printed. So um, the erasures, you can't necessarily do that. It's possible for you to do analysis, but when it comes to the redrawing, it might be a bit difficult. So with this one, I'll be using a separate sheet of paper. And then for this separate sheet of paper, I'll be taping it um, in line with my A13 right here. So I'll be getting a masking tape. Then I'll be taping it right here. I'll be preventing um, the drawing itself and even the special instructions. Make sure that that's secure, but not too secure that you can't really remove it. Then I'll be opening the light box or the drawing pad so you can see right here. So the next thing that I'll be doing is that I'll be tracing everything. So when I'm going to trace this, I can basically remove it. One of the things that I'll be omitting is the guidelines for the eyes. And then we also have the basic shape for the nose. But for everything else, I'll be lightly um, tracing them using this light blue pencil. So I'll get into that one. So when you're doing this one, make sure that it is as light as possible. So I've tried to make it a bit darker than is necessary because I won't like you to see it. Um, another really important thing is for you to be able to add everything. So that includes the keyframe number or the keyframe label. Um, if the time chart is present, we'll have to copy the um, time chart and of course the special instructions. I have my um, keyframe already so this is the redrawn version so I'm basically free to erase anything that I need to erase later on when we're going to do our redrawing process so the next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to move on to the analysis so for the analysis this is basically wherein you're going to check everything that you have to check before we do the redrawing process it is technically possible for you to redraw and do analysis at the same time. However, it is much more practical for you to do all of the analysis first and then the redrawing all of it later 
for you to be able to prevent that back and forth thing. And if you do back and forth, tendency is that you would make a lot more mistakes. So it's kind of like creating two eyes separately. So if you create one eye first and then the other one, you kind of create this mismatch. So you just keep correcting and correcting until you've basically wasted your time. So that's basically the same with this one right here. So I have right the lightened version, which is drawn in a light blue pencil. So for the analysis and the redrawing process, I'll be using a darker blue pencil. So the one that you can see right now that I'm using for my A13 and for my um, special instructions. So with this one, let's have a rundown on the things that we'll have to do for um, the analysis. So the first one is you have to also take note of what you're going to do with the A13 in comparison with the other keyframes. That is also why I have my A10 right here and my A4. So this is one thing that you don't necessarily need to do because more or less that is already been planned by the senior animator. However, it's just for you, for you to counter check if you need to emphasize some things and to also counter check how you're going to do the drawing process. So since we have quite a lot of keyframes here, you can do a number of ways on how you can check the motion. So you can do it by flipping, which is the more standard version or the easier version, and we have rolling, which is mostly used for which is the more standard version or the easier version, and we have rolling, which is mostly used for in between. So basically for flipping, all you have to do is to place one hand on top of the keyframe and then use your other hand to basically check the motion. So you can do something like this. Just check if the motion is working. So that's just a really clear left run. You can also check it via your light box. So you, if I'm going to place my A13 at the very top, since I can't really see that. So you can kind of see the motion right here. So it kind of goes down. I, it kind of, yeah, it kind of goes at the downward spiral right here. So that's kind of the motion that we're trying to go for. Because essentially this is, A13 is the settle. So the settle is basically the final portion of the step. So if you're going to compare it actually with your A1, they're kind of like the same. So with that one, you can use your A um, other keyframes, the modeling process and the poses process, and even the facial expressions. Next one is you'll have to also check the pose and the secondary actions. So before we move on towards the pose, let's also look at what the main action is. So basically the main action is, as I've stated before, a settle. So the settle is basically the movement towards the original position. So the original position is a, an A1, which is you're going back to normal. Because basically your A10 and your A4 are more of takes or more of a more intense action. So for this one, it's more of going towards a more relaxed um a more relaxed position. However, the facial expression states otherwise. So for your A10, if actually you're going to compare the facial expression for A10 and A13, your A10 has a much more surprised facial expression compared to that of your A10. So you would have a much more elongated that of your A10. So you would have a much more elongated face and a much more intense facial expression. So those are that's basically what this action is all about. So you can kind of see main hints to that one. So the very first one is you have a much more relaxed position compared to that of your A10 right here. So you can kind of see that the shoulders are a bit more slunched back, especially the neck. And for this one, it is a bit more stretched, um, so to speak. So for this one, it's a bit more um, normalized. Another one is the placement of the head. Comparing it to your A10, your A10 kind of has, it's a bit more up right here, whereas for your A13, it's a bit downwards. So you can kind of see the motion of the neck. So you can still see some distance between the neck right here. However, for your A13 right here, the distance between the neck and the start of your jacket thing is almost, of your jacket thing, is almost non, not present. So with that one, that's your main action. You also have to take note of some secondary actions, like for example, the movement of the shoulders, the movement of the arms right here, and even some of the movements of the torso. So some of the things that we'll have to take into consideration is, again, the arms right here and then right here how your shoulders are basically going to move, but essentially, this is not supposed to move compared to that of your A10. 
So that is one thing that we'll have to look for when we're creating the poses. So with that one, let's look at some of the things that we have to look for in terms of the poses. So the first thing that we check in the pose is basically the line of action as well as the silhouette. So again, this is something that you don't need to necessarily check. However, it's a good way for you to guide yourself. So one thing right here is we have the line of action. So this line right here. So if you can kind of towards the center of the body, which is kind of correct for, for a line of action. So as you move towards the, when it goes towards the torso, it's okay. But once it moves towards the head, you kind of diverge into these two lines. So you're not necessarily sure what that line of action is. So for this one, this line right here going more of an upward side, that's more for your A10. And then for this one, this lower run right here, since your character kind of goes slack jawed or it kind of relaxes a little bit, so your line of action becomes more lower. So we'll be using this one and not necessarily this one. Another thing that we'll have to focus on is the pose of the arm right here. So um, this is something that we'll have to focus on because this is an example of a special instruction. So it's one of the special instructions right here. It's said here, the hand placement should be the same with the A4. So as a normal reader, you might not necessarily is. So in these cases, if you have any special instructions that are not really understandable, it is necessary for you to go to your um, it's necessary for you to go to your senior animator or any other animators who are more experienced to consult you to consult you in this one. But essentially, for you to understand this, I'll be bringing out my A4 right here. So what we'll be referencing right here is the hand. So the hand is probably around here. So we'll be using that one as a pivot point. That means it shouldn't necessarily move. For this one, you have two options for the arm. So this um, bent one right here, we also have this straight line right here. So I'll be using my light box. I'll be lining those two up. So with that one, you can kind of see that um, the closest one is this curved arm right here. So what I can do is that I'll highlight it a little bit so that's that I'll highlight it a little bit so that in the redrawing process I can um, I can know that I won't be erasing this one and I'll be erasing the straight one. However, as you can see, it's also not 100% aligned because you can kind of see the A4 right here is around here. This arm right here is not entirely at that place. So that has to be changed later on when we're going to do the redrawing process. Next one is the next special instruction right here. The coat moves with arm movement. So with this one, you can kind of basically see two options. So there are actually two options here. So one option is this one. So you have this one and then you have this one. So you're going to have to choose or maybe just change it entirely based on how the arm movement should be. So with that one, we'll be moving on to our model sheet. So if you actually check our model sheet and even for our previous um our previous um for our previous keyframes, you can kind of see that it's almost parallel. So your coat should be parallel to that of your arm if ever it's extended. However, it should never be um at a tangent point. So you can you kind of need still a little bit of space between the coat and the arm. So you can clearly see this in your A4. So it's very much parallel to this one. But as you can see, there is still a little bit of space compared to that of just placing the entire arm right here because that would essentially be a tangent line and we don't really want tangent lines. So with this one, um, we're going to check. So the first line right here is, it's kind of close, but if you can, if you go later on down the line, you can kind of see that it's um, moving towards a tangent. So that's not really possible. For this one, um, you're almost creating a tangent point, and if you kind of extend this line, it's not entirely parallel. So you have... Now let's move on to the facial expressions. So for the facial expressions, you have again two... Um, you have two special instructions right here. So the first one is elongated face more than A10. So if you're going to check your A10, it has basically the same instruction, which is an elongated face. So what this means in terms of A10 is that it should be longer compared to that of your A4. So let me isolate my A10 right here. And I'll be opening my light box again. 
and then I'll be aligning these two. So in terms of this um, hair piece right here. So if you can kind of see it, the move, um, the spacing between the chin for A4 and the, the spacing between the chin for A10 is very different. So this one is much more elongated. Another um, thing to note is that in terms of the width, it's quite different. So this one is a bit thicker, whereas for this one, it's a bit thinner. So this is a way for you to be able to attain or retain. So this is a way for you to be able to attain or retain the volume of the shape. So usually what happens is that if you elongate something, you have to chop off the width. If you make the width shorter, you have to add more towards the height. So with that one, it's something that you have to that's why these things are um, a bit thinner because it needs to compensate for the weight or for the length that came right here. Because basically, what you're going to do is that if you place a more elongated version but maintain the width right here, you're kind of adding more volume that's non-existent. So that's kind of illogical in terms of character design. So with that one, this one is a bit more elongated. So what we want to do for A13 right here is to make it much more elongated than A10. So I'll be doing the same idea. I'll be aligning this um, top hair piece right here. So if you're going to compare it, they're kind of the same. So they're kind of the same. So with that one, we'll have to make it a bit longer later on when we're going to do the redrawing process. So again, make this one longer. And by logic, you have to make this one a bit thinner or the sides of the face a bit thinner. So that would be um, much more chafed off later on. And then another important thing is we have this instruction, which means chin same distance or what reads chin same distance. So what do we mean by that one? For me to um, better explain this, we have our facial expressions model sheet right here. So if you're going to check the model sheet right here, um, if you're going to compare the lowest point of the mouth right here up until the chin for every single facial expressions, they're essentially the same size. So when you open your mouth, there needs to be still some space or almost the same space. So there are some mistakes in this one, like for example, this um, smiling face right here. So with that one, it's kind of right here. So with that one, it's kind of, it doesn't really go to model. However, you can still see some difference or you can still see some spacing in between that. So whenever we're going to do the slack jaw or whenever we're going to open our mouth, we'll have to make sure that there is um, a, a consistent amount of space. So we can use our A10 right here. So use that as reference. So again, we'll have to make it a bit longer. So once you've made it longer, you have to make sure that this one is also around the same placement. So this one is a bit lower. So what we can do is that we can uh, we can use this one as reference, this mouth right here, and then use that one to elongate the chin even further. So I'll be aligning the lowest point of the mouth of A13 to the lowest point of the mouth in A10, and then I'll be creating another chin right there. And then another thing that you might not notice is that the um, the eyes, it's kind of misaligned. So the eyes are around here. The one in A10 is a bit lower. So we'll have to make it a bit lower as well. Same is true with the nose. Which brings us to our modeling. So when we're going to do modeling, this is basically one of the most intensive parts of the redrawing process. Because this is the one that the senior animator or the cleanup an um, keyframe animator does not necessarily care about. So it's up to you to be able to add as much detail or all of the details as possible into this drawing. So let's look at some mistakes right here. So number one is, of course, this hair piece right here. So you can kind of see that it's a bit too small. So you can see the width right here is quite large, even for our A4 right here. It's also quite large. So we'll also have to mimic that one right here. And also the placement of this tip right here is not the same. Another one is the movement of this line. Another one is the movement of this line right here. So it's ki it's kind of choppy. So you have this line right here and then this line right here. They basically have to connect, because but then you're not seeing that one so much. So you can very much see it in your A10, wherein this line is almost connected. One swooping line, you can also see that in your A4 right here. It's one swooping line. 
and that's a characteristic of the modeling right here. Basically, what you're creating is that you're just creating one consistent line or the lines are as consistent as possible. So you can see quite a lot of tangent lines if you think about it. So, and then we also have here your lapel thing right here. So if you're going to check our um, designs right here, this one's more or less have to be aligned. This one is aligned. So this one, you have two options. You have this one right here, and then you have this one right here. So what you're going to do is that you're going to choose something that is quite do is that you're going to choose something that is quite similar to this one. So you'll have to extend this one a bit. And then of course you have the trimmings right here and this backside right here. So with that one, those are just some things that we'll have to take into consideration whenever we're going to do the clean um the redrawing process for the A13. So I'll be setting the other keyframes aside. So with that one, let's begin with the redrawing process. First thing that I'll have to do is that I'll be taking an eraser and then I'll be erasing everything that I don't need. So based from my analysis, I don't really need this lapel thing over here. I don't need this arm over here, the line of action, um, anything unnecessary, any other unnecessary lines, I'll have to remove it with a plastic eraser. I need to make sure that it's as clean as possible. I'm not going to tear any part of the paper. I'm not going to wrinkle any part of the paper because any type of wrinkling is damage to the keyframe. And if there's damage to the keyframe, you'll have to there's damage to the keyframe, you'll have to repeat it again. So try to do this very um very efficiently and at the same time exercise caution and care. Okay, so basically I have everything that I don't need um, erased and now I'll be taking a needed eraser. So this needed eraser is used for me to lightly erase every single line that I have right here so that later on on the redrawing process and even on the cleanup process, I don't have to see it as much and also it's less distracting and also I'll be using a needed eraser but you can use a plastic eraser so you can kind of remove the skin right here and then use the surface to just lightly run over it so that it would be partially erased. Okay, so I have everything lightly erased and now I'll be moving on to the redrawing process again. I'll be using the same blue pencil for me to be able to do some of the redrawings and how I'm going to do the redrawing process is very similar to that of the analysis process. So I started off first with the first post right here. So I'll be starting off with that one. So the first thing that I'll have to do is to do the hand placement properly. So for me to be able to do that uh, much better, I'll be using my reference here for A10. But since you're using your activity, um, for A4, you can also use that one as well. So you have your A4 right here, place it at the bottom, and then use that as reference for the hand. So you can create like very small markings. So make sure that these ones are aligned. If they're not aligned, then this entire exercise is worthless. And then your hand is basically right here. Use and then kind of check where the shoulder is. So for you to be able to check the shoulder, you need to know the length of the arm. So the length of the arm is essentially one head. So this one head right here, find the measurement around here and then use that. So my shoulder part is around here. So I would have to determine based from where the coat is, my shoulder area is also around here. So now I have my two pivot points. So I have my hand right here, and then I have my shoulder right here. And then I'll be creating my elbow. So the creation of the elbow is more or less trial and error. The reason being, you'll have to determine the proper length of the head, because as stated, your A4, um, the head on your A4, which is a normal sized head, that's going to be the basis. And based on how you're going to place the elbow, that will determine the length of that. Placed. So you can create a small line right here to connect these two. So this will be the center of your arm. So your arm, you're going to create the width of it. And for reference, 
the um the width of the neck right here is basically the same measurement as the width of the arm so the arm doesn't necessarily taper becomes um thinner towards the end so it's just basically one long cylinder so you can use this one as basis find the measurement of the neck right here find that towards the center and then there you can create your arm So I have my arm right here. And then for the coat, I'll be making sure that this one is one continuous line because that is part of the modeling process here. And then for the coat, I'll be making sure that this one is one continuous line because that is part of the modeling process. And then make sure that the coat is parallel to that of the arm right here. So. I have to create this one swooping line. Then from that one, I'll be creating the coat. So there you go. Okay, so that's for my coat moves with arm movement. And then I have my hand placement is same with A4. Now I'll be moving on to the facial expression. So first of all, I need to make a much more elongated face. For me to be able to do that, I'll be using my A10 right here. And then turning on the light box again. Finding the top of the head. So I'll just be using this part right here. So what I've created right here is that I've created the longer chin and I've also tapered the sides right here so that um, any lost volume that is placed on the elongated part of the chin right here is made up by these ones right here. And then from that one, I can now start to create other portions like let's say the mouth. So for the mouth, I'll be using, okay, so it's a bit lower. And then based from that one, I can even move on towards the modeling. So first thing that I'll have to do is find the proper placement for the eye. my face right here and then I'll be creating this hair piece right here so this hair piece is actually created by finding the middle part of the face and then based from that one I can also copy what I have right here find out where the middle part is is that one for reference For the ears, make sure that it's around eye level. So the creation of the ears, as you can see right here, is that it's a bit more polygonal, which is something that's quite important for this character. So when this character was created, it focused more on creating polygonal lines, or it's more of rough edges. Whereas for some characters, they might use more curves. Um, you might see some curves on this one, like for example, this swooping line right here. But more or less, you have more polygonal um, basic shapes. Next one is I'll be creating the neck. So for the neck, it has to be essentially one swooping line. And then from that one, I can now move on to creating the lapels. Then 
then I can also use this to kind of find this side right here, which is supposedly right here, and then again, more of the trimming. So, I guess that completes the um, redrawing process. So, the last part before we actually do the cleanup process is for me to be able to do some erasing. So, again, get your plastic eraser and then erase everything that you don't need. So, the guidelines right here, here, these lapel, this mistaken lapels, and everything that's not necessary for the drawing. that I have erased during the redrawing process I'll have or during that I need for the redrawing process I'll have to draw those once again and then I also forgot one thing which is this turtleneck thing over here and then one last thing is for us to be able to use our needed eraser and then lightly erase everything that I have to erase have to erase So I have my A13 over here, and now that everything is lightly erased, now we can move on to the cleanup process. So if you're going to use a separate paper for this one, you can um, go ahead and ignore the previous process, which is erasing everything lightly. But if you are planning to use the same paper like I will be doing in this one, you can basically just remove, you can just basically erase everything and then use this the same paper as well. And whenever you're going to do any type of scanning, it won't be visible um, in the final product. So that's the beauty of a blue pencil. You're essentially saving paper. So with this one, um, ideally you will only be using two pieces of paper if you're not going to have a mistake in cleanup compared to that of three pieces of paper even if you got the cleanup correct in the first try. So the cleanup that we'll be doing is more of a thin traditional line, so similar to that of what is required for you for module 4 and module 5. So let's get right.
So that ends with how we're going to do the cleanup. So this is what we would like to see for the final output. So you have your cleanup proper. So you can use it on top of a non-photo pencil like this one. And then you also have the keyframe number and special instructions. Since A10 has a timing chart, there is a necessity for you to have a time chart. So with that one, that ends my demonstration. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please use our this um, social media accounts like our Discord, YouTube, Facebook for you to be able to um, learn more for this one. With that one, thank you so much for watching.